In this video, we're going to look at the normal distribution. Now, there's many variables in the real world that when you draw them, they would fit and it would have a bell shape. So here's an example of a normal distribution. So if I cast a curve over this set of data, you can see it has very roughly has a bell shape. Now, this set of data is the year 10 exam results from 2009, and they're shown below. Now, you can see there's a small number of people at either end that do very badly or very well, but the majority of the results I lie, lie around the middle, and the middle, the score, the mean score in this exam was, or this uh, set of exams was 67. So you can see, we uh, the data follows approximately the normal distribution curve. This is the case for many, many different variables. So the weight of a potato is a very common one to be uh, talked about. Uh, the height of pupils, the mass of pupils. Um, lots of different things uh, follow a normal distribution curve. So you're always going to have the bulk of your things in the around the middle, 50%, I suppose you could say, close to the mean. And then you're going to have your extreme values, but there's going to be less of the extreme values. So then you can see how it follows this uh, bell-shaped curve. So the normal distribution curves are bell-shaped and they're symmetrical about the mean and we'll have a total area of 1. So the area under the curve is 1. We, we're going to go on and show how we can use this for probabilities, but we, we use a set of standardized as uh, z-scores for tables, so uh, for the for our probabilities. So we have a, a set of tables that are given in your formula booklet for GCSE further mathematics. Um, but we can also, and they have got a mean, the standardized tables have got a mean of mu, and a standard deviation of one. But you can convert any set of data into a Z, any set of data X into a Z score using this formula. Z is equal to X minus mu, your mean, divided by sigma, where sigma is a standard deviation. So if you have any set of values, X, just do take away the mean from that set of values and then divide by sigma and that gets you the corresponding Z score. And then you can use your table uh, to do that. We're going to look at how we use this table. Okay, here we have our normal distribution table. Um, this is, if I do a diagram, there's your bell-shaped curve. And notice, there's your, it's symmetrical about the mean, which is mu, and the standard deviation was 1. That's not really that important for this at the minute, but what is important is that the bell shape uh, is symmetrical about the mean mu. Mu and mean mu, which is 0 in this case. So this area is 0.5, this area is also 0.5. So what your tables give you is the tables will give you, if I do another one here, I do, not, whoop, do another curve, use your imagination, that's a bell-shaped curve, just like the first one. Uh, the tables will give you the probability from the very left up to some point that is beyond the halfway mark, so beyond the zero. So if I zoom in here at point 0.6, at my z value of 0.6, what it tells me in the table this is 0 0.600. So the probability that the Z is, probability that big Z is less than 0 0.6 is equal to, and what we had here was, what was it? 0 0.7257. Uh, okay, if I change this, and I'll show you how we use our decimal, so I'll just pick a different number, I'll do 1.59. So 1.5, you go to 1.5, and then you go across to the 0.59, and wherever they meet, that's what you get. So that tells you the probability that Z is less than 1.59 is equal to 0.9441. Okay, I'll do one more of this type. So I'm just going to be uh, change that to, just pick some random, 2.75. So from my tables, I can work out what probability Z is less than 2.75 is. So you go to 2.7 first of all, and then I need an extra 0 0.05. So it's here, and I go down and wherever they meet. And if I've done that right, it is going to be 0 0.9970. There's how we use our probability tables uh, for normal distribution. So we're going to look at a, a couple of examples of how we can use our tables in. Uh, when we've got our Z scores. So part one says, part one we've got uh, to find the probability that Z is less than 1 point, Z is less than 1.2. So good idea is to draw a diagram for these. 
mark on where your mean is, mark on where your 1.2, and it's really just to get an idea of where your value is in relation to the mean. So remember, your tables only work from uh, from the, as left as less than first for a start and from the midpoint here, so from the halfway mark, which is zero. So if they're not in that form, you may have to convert and uh, flip your uh, diagrams around a wee bit. Okay, so that's what we've got. So we're going to go back. So we can do this one directly from our tables. We're going to go back, scroll back up to our tables. So we scroll back up to our tables. And they should reappear here. Uh, so there you can see all we need for this one. So we want to find a probability that Z is less than 1.2. And 1.2 is 1.20, so it's in the first column. So this is what we're looking for here. So it's just 0 0.8849 is what we're looking for in this question. So we'll go back down and put that in. So it was probably at Z was less than 1.2 was equal to 0 0.8849. Okay, part two. Again, we want to find this one, probability that Z is greater than 2.36. So you do a diagram. There's your zero mark. 2.36 would be somewhere here. It's greater than, so it's to the right-hand side. So to get this area in here, that really is going to be 1 minus what tables can do, which is Z less than, probability Z is less than 2.36. So our answer is 1 minus the probability that Z is less than 2.36. We've got to go back to our tables and find out what that is. So we're going, we're going to be looking for 2.36 in our tables. So there's 2.3. And then we'll go back up the top and find our 0 0.06 column. So where these two things meet. So we're in here and they meet here. So it is this one. It is 0 0.9909. So you can put that in, and then let's just calculate our exercise from here in, 0 0.9909. 1 minus 0 0.9909 is 0 0.0091. Okay, part three. Part three asks us to find the probability that Z is less than minus 0.55. So again, we do a drawing, we diagram, we sketch. There you have minus... 0.55 and we want less than, so we want this bit. So we're going to flip our uh, diagram rounds using the symmetrical properties. This the shaded area in the first wee diagram is going to be the same as the shaded area in the second diagram, and this second diagram, the shaded area would be one minus the probability that Z is less than 0.55. So it's going to be one minus something, which we're about to find, and then we'll get our answer. So we're going up to the tables again to look for 0.55. I'll get rid of these ones to avoid any confusion. Uh, so it was 0.55 we were looking for. So there's your 0.5 is here, and then 0.55, so we need to go to another 0, 0 0.05, sorry, and then that will take you to 0.7088. So that's what we're going to put in back here. So that's going to be 1 minus 0.7088. And when you do that, you will get 0.2912. In the last part of this question, we are to do, we are to find uh, the probability that Z is greater than min minus 2.91. So again, we will draw a diagram. Very basic sketch, no ruler required. Minus 2.19, it was greater than, so it's this bit. So it looks awkward, but it's actually easier than the previous two examples because by the symmetrical property, you can mark on your zero, you can mark on 2.19, and this shaded area would be the same as the one we have above. And this shaded area we can get from our, directly from our tables as that Z is less than 2.19. We just go back to our tables and get that. So we're looking for 2.19. Not too far. Again, we'll get rid of these things to avoid any confusion. So 2.19 was here. There's our 2.1. was your last column. So it corresponds to 0 0.9857. And we put that in, and that is us done. 0 0.9857. So 
gone through that quite quickly, but with a bit of practice, they really are very, very easy to use, these things. But a, a diagram, you get absolutely no marks for your diagram, just to make that clear in the exam, but it makes it, it, makes it very easy for you to understand uh, exactly what's going on.